Okay. Looks like we can come to order. Today is the Wednesday, September 3rd, regular meeting of the Planning Commission. Could we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Schitz. Here. Commissioner Togerson. Here. Commissioner Jero. Here. Commissioner Lee. Here. And Chair King. Here. Uh, report on regarding the posting of agenda, please. The agenda for this meeting was posted on Wednesday, August 27, 2008, on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Thank you. Would you please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda item four, the approval of minutes from August 20th. Any comments, corrections? I have one uh, minor correction on page three. Uh, with about uh, a little over halfway down, Commissioner Drill was concerned. Uh, I think I was only concerned about inclusionary zoning uh, as being an environmental justice issue because it's only applied today in, this, in the San Fernando corridor. Um, so that my concern is only having inclusionary zoning in the San Fernando cor corridor could be perceived as an environmental justice issue. I'll move a uh, move approval with that change. Any other comments or corrections? Seeing none, could we have a second to the motion to approve as an anode? Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Schitz. Aye. Commissioner Torgerson. Aye. Commissioner Zero. Aye. Commissioner Lee. Aye. And Chair King. Aye. On a vote of 5 to 0, the minutes of August 20th have been approved. <coughs> Agenda item 5, oral communications. I have no cards. Agenda item 6, there are no appeals. Agenda item 7, there is no old business. Moving on to agenda item 8A, new business, tentative track map number 62895. The location is 401 through 409 Hawthorne Street. It's a request for a time extension of an approved tentative track map to subdivide a 17 residential unit development located on approximately 18,750 square feet of site within a high density residential R1250 zone. The proposed mitigated negative deck was adopted by the Design Review Board on September 16, 2004. Staff is represented by Villiers Hematitis and it's a recommendation to um, recommend approval or recommend extension. Recommend approval of the requested time extension. Yes, okay, thank you. So, thank you, Commissioner Kane. Uh, board members, as Commissioner Kane just, or Chairperson Kane pointed out, this is a time extension request of an approved tentative track map. That would be tentative track map number 62895. It is for a 17 unit multifamily residential project. It was approved under the R1250 standards in compliance with all zoning code requirements. And again, the Planning Commission approved the tentative track map back on September 8, 2005. The tentative track map is set to expire on September 8, 2008 in a few days. However, there was a time extension request filed, which automatically allows the tentative track map an additional 60 days. Um, Furthermore, there was a recent Senate bill, I believe it's 1132, that was passed that granted all approved tentative track maps within a certain time frame an additional one year of time extension. However, the applicant, and this is applicant Abul Hosanunian, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing the name, um, has specifically requested to be brought before the Planning Commission for the full 36 month time extension request. The project is not under yet construction, uh, it is in plan check. And it, again, complies with the, all of the R1250 standards and the high density general plan designation. If you have any further questions, I'm available to answer them. You were provided a copy of the original Planning Commission and staff report as well as the conditions of approval. What is before the Planning Commission today would simply be a time extension request. The conditions of approval cannot be modified according to state law, so you would simply be approving an additional 36-month approval period. That so my question is, and this is it, there's no additional, if, if they want to come back for whatever the reason that uh, they will not get another extension? I'm sorry? What is the protocol on the extension? How many times can you do, you know, additional extensions? I, or? I believe you're allowed a th one 36-month time extension. 36 months, okay. Correct. And then this will be 36 months on top of the state mandated 
year. Twelve months. Correct. So it'll be a total of four years. It would be a total of four years. I and my only con my only concern is uh, due to work commitments and being out of town. I didn't have a chance to drive by and look at this particular <coughs> property. Now is mm -hmm. it being maintained adequately? Well, we do have code enforcement, which would be no. Even if the building is vacant, it is required <coughs> to be maintained in um, some sort of semblance of orderly fashion. So, if the building, if at any point, and I've driven past it myself, uh, several of the buildings, several of the smaller single-family homes are vacant and boarded up. Others are still occupied. In general, the property is being maintained. However, if there is a maintenance issue in the future, we would be able to have code enforcement go out there and start a code enforcement case and work with the property to, owner to maintain it. I wanted to get that point about code enforcement and the neighborhood services yes. being responsible for that so that people aren't upset if we give them an extension and it sits there for four more years looking like an eyesore. Yeah. Is there certain, uh, I guess, uh, requirements or, you know, I mean, the parameters that uh, you consider for you know, allowing this type of extension, uh, you know, when they give reasons, obviously there was a reason for the delay. Mm -hmm. And what are the things that you're considering for when you make it this 36-month extension uh, that, you know, base what things you were you able to base on you know, Correct. for your decision? What we would look at would be, first of all, the existing conditions uh, of the zoning. Um, is it still the same zoning as previously that the board has approved, which is R1250? It's still in compliance with zoning standards. It's still in compliance with the general plan elements. Um, there has been a, obviously a downturn in the economy, and so therefore the applicant has not yet started the project. There is every, you know, the intention to go forward, and hopefully this additional time period, the economy will be, go back in an upswing condition and that the project will be constructed. <coughs> It sounds like it was the economy that drove Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> okay. Any other questions from the commission for staff? Mr. Sheets? One minor question along the same lines that the questions we've already had. Um, back to the issue about the neighborhood services. Yes. Is there some standard? We have, this is, uh, I had a note to bring this up in one of the previous mm -hmm. extensions. There was an issue about the maintaining of the property and that needed to be corrected. Is there some standard, I mean this is 36 months is a long time and now this is going to be 48 months and they haven't done anything in the past 36 months. The potential is there for things to not look good and I know I've seen a lot of those throughout the city that get to that condition. Do we have a standard that they have to maintain it and if not that well, the landscaping has to be maintained. So when there's weeds or overgrown vegetation, overgrown vegetation, that is a code actually that the neighborhood services inspectors can cite against the property owner and require them to trim and maintain their live landscaping, uh, peeling and flaking paint. Again, that's not permitted by code, so they would have to then um, sand it down or pa repaint it or whatnot to bring it into compliance with no peeling and flaking paint. Um, if there are any other type of illegal trash or dumping, again, the property owner would be res responsible for um, removing that trash and debris. So that case would be initiated by somebody <clears throat> getting tired of seeing it that way? Is that how that happens? Or? We are on a, pro on a reactive basis, so anytime there is a complaint, I do know that the inspectors also go out there and do field checks, and so if the inspectors see this, they can then go ahead and start a code enforcement case as well. Okay, and there's one, being naive to this, uh, I, I see that the, it looks like possibly there's ownership change. Is that, is that an issue ever as far as a major change in, in bringing the case? Yes. Um, the ownership has changed from the previous approval. When it comes to ownership changes, we're, what we're primarily looking at right now is the development itself. And, and the previous conditions that it was approved at and today's current conditions, you know. Right. And when it comes to ownership in this particular instance, that does not matter. However, the applicant, now the applicant who is obviously going forward with this time extension request is different than the applicant who was originally the one submitting the approved tenant track map. Right, and as long as they adhere to all of the... As, as long as all of, all of the tenant track map guidelines are adhered to and the requirements are being met, which in this case nothing has essentially changed on the tenant track map itself. Okay, that's all I have. Um, 
in your staff report, one of the things we had asked over the last few months and staff's been very responsive to is to make sure that when we get these time extensions that departments um, mm -hmm. are contacted, you had indicated in the staff report that you really hadn't had much comment mm -hmm. and what you did had no we, issue. We have received several staff comments um, from Parks and Rec, from Water and Power, from Community Development and Housing. Actually, Community Development and Housing relayed a concern regarding the Just Cause Eviction Notice and whether or not their requested um, requested items had been addressed. And yes, if you take a look under condition, and this is as part of the original conditions of approval, under condition number 32, community development and housing requirements, the applicant shall comply with the Just Cause Eviction Ordinance as well as the mitigation measures listed, and this is in the original Environmental Information Form 2003-027 relating to the potential displacement of very low and low-income persons. And so their concerns have been met because the conditions of approval included their original comments. Okay, so in other words, there's been nothing that you've received from the departments that would indicate a serious change in conditions. No. Nope, because again, our choice is either denying the track map, at which point they get to start over, or they get their extension. Correct. And you're happy based on your recommendations for Correct. the extension. We have not received any negative um, comments from any of the various departments. The only, like I mentioned, the one concern was from Community Development and Housing, and we have addressed that in the conditions of approval because those same conditions of approval that were approved for the town of track map will then apply to the time extension. Very good. Any other questions from the commission? We have no speaker cards. Probably no more remarks from staff, I'm guessing. Well, then I have another question. Then please. <laughs> I was just curious, um, what is the city's policy on vacant houses? Because if a couple of those houses are vacant already and yes. they're boarded up and sit there for the next four years, that becomes an attractive nuisance as far as... Uh, I would um, be concerned. That has been a policy that has been widely discussed, whether or not the boarding up of homes can be continued. As long as the property is being maintained, um, technically I don't, under, and I'm going to look to um, Mr. Garcia, but technically the property has to be maintained as if it, and it appear as if it's occupied. Mm -hmm. Now, We've had instances in the past where properties have been boarded up and by code they're not supposed to be. So that is something that we can work with code enforcement in regards to the actual boarding up of the property. But so long as even though it remains vacant and they continue to make sure that the properties themselves don't have peeling and flaking paint, overgrown vegetation or any trash and debris, they can continue to be, <coughs> to be maintained vacant. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can it be suggested uh, on the part of staff when an applicant comes in for the extension, can it be suggested to them that this is, you know, that you're going out to the other departments and that an unkept property could place them at risk in terms of getting their extension so that at the very least they do a quick housekeeping? And of course. Right. I'd be more than happy to do and relay that to staff as well for any future time extension requests. Fire a shot across their bow. Oh, will do. <laughs> a little warning shot just to make sure. Or between the rise. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions, comments? Um, could we have a motion, please? I move to uh, grant the 36-month extension. Maybe we could ask you to work just off this format, Mr. Lee, so we can get some of the legal things into it. Okay. Um, move to uh, to approve the consideration of time extension request for tentative track map number six two eight nine five. Approval said tentative track map is hereby extended for a period of time not to exceed 36 months until August 8, 2011. Very good. And then for the three um, items that were noted, just A, B, and C as prepared by staff. Yeah, uh, as three. Also, do I need to read this out? Or? No, no, no. Okay. Just by referencing, <clears throat> just, we're just noting that that's part of it. Okay. Those are findings of fact for the time extension. Thank you. So yes, thank you. Just one question on that: Is the date correct with the year extension? Or we went through this last time. Maybe <laughs> I'm I think not. it is 2012, <laughs> Mr. Commissioner. It should be sheets, yeah. 2000. It should be. Well, this was for the original 36 months, right. and um, we'll make I'm, sure I'm going to double check with Mr. Garcia to make sure that that it is properly worded. Because again, the state, the state, according to the Senate bill, provided an additional automatic one-year extension. 
but the board itself is being requested, you know, being yeah. requested to, appro to approve a 36 month time extension. So we're actually talking 2012. Correct. Right. Okay. Let's just alter it now. It's a 36 month extension to, because they've automatically. To the automatic extension. Mm -hmm. to Correct. Okay, and I'm so we'll, we'll go ahead and alter it now, and then we'll change Mr. the findings. Mr. Lee, you're modifying your yes, I am. motion accordingly. Seeking support. I second it. A motion support. Please call roll. Commissioner <coughs> Chip. Aye. Commissioner Dorgerson. Aye. Commissioner Jerome. Aye. Commissioner Lee. Aye. And Chair Kennedy. Aye. On a vote of 5 to 0, the extension for tender track map 62895 has been granted. We'll move on to Agenda 8B. It's a special recreation development review. It's PSR number 2008-002. It's 3100 Country Club Drive, and it's a request to construct a new 358-square-foot comfort station, men and women's restroom, to be located adjacent to the fifth tee of the existing golf course. The applicant is Nakaishi Associates. Staff is, rec is uh, uh, represented geez, by Gabriel Riza. Yes. yes. Thank you. That represents one name in a row I've gotten right. So oh, we're starting to three. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Please give us the overview. Okay. Good afternoon, members of the commission. The next case on review before you is PSR-2008-002, located at 3100 Country Club Drive. These are the submitted applications, actually plans by the applicant. Um, the first off with the overall entire site plan, proposed elevations with a floor plan, a small reduction of the existing clubhouse main building on the property, a location map, a material board, a tree report, as well as a photographic survey, which I can give to the commission. On to the project proposal. The proposed project involves the construction of a new 358 square foot men's and women's restroom facility that will be located adjacent to the fifth tee of an existing golf course. The proposed location for the building will be in the upper northeast portion of the golf course and will not be visible from Walker Center Avenue. Slight repaving is also proposed to accommodate parking in the Country Club golf carts. The proposed parking space will only serve the golf carts and not the general public. Therefore, no striped parking spaces will be required. Overall, the location of the facility appears appropriate to the project site and context in particular particularly in that the distance from the primary clubhouse building is approximately over 1,800 feet away. The project mass and scale appears to be compatible in its relation to existing buildings on site. Um, if I may address this paragraph in the staff report, um, staff did mention in the report that there is one California sycamore. Um, I just learned of this morning our urban forester has visited the site um, and has dedicated, actually made findings that that is not a protected sycamore tree. So that is not, uh, it will not be mitigated by any city or state measure. So what kind of tree? Is it a London plane or what is it? Um, I do have the check. Mm -hmm. Look at you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Got to know your trees. You want to protect them. Ah, leaves. Tree. Well, actually, the, the <laughs> that's comment I have from the urban forest learned that is, it is not a western sycamore, and it does not mention what type of tree it is. That's it fine. says here it's a California sycamore. On the, on the report. The the plant is uh, racing most, if I, if I recall my tree species. Good for you. That from the report. report. Oh, see, that, that particular report was provided by the applicant. Ah. The findings were that I just stated were from our city's urban forester. Who okay. This, this so the city code specifically <coughs> protects a particular species of sycamore, not just sycamore in general. I <laughs> you should find that this point. Because it's a California native. Yeah. On yeah. um, <coughs> reviewed the proposed improvements and concludes that they are considered with the overall intent of the municipal, municipal code. The planning department recommends that the planning commission approve the proposed project subject to conditions. That concludes my presentation. The applicant is in the audience for further questions. If I have any questions from the commission, i Initial questions from the commission for staff. Mr. Lee. I have a question. Um, I read through the report, and I know your recommendation is uh, to leave the tree in place, and I think the paragraph, page 204, 
it is difficult to determine the extent of a root removal necessary until the surrounding soil is excavated, is the, uh, one of the uh, statements made in the report. <clears throat> and you give option of, uh, you know, uh, diff three different options. One is a complete removal of the tree. One is transplanting planting the tree, and the, the other one is obviously leaving the tree and removing some of the, the roots uh, to put the structure in there. Uh, and your recommendation is to leave the tree in there to remove the, uh, you know, the roots and then to place the uh, structure. I saw the proximity of the building uh, next to the uh, tree, and my question is that, um, you know, right now it's okay, but, you know, I have trees in my house, and they seem to, uh, to get under my footing, under my slab, and, and <laughs> crack my slabs and, uh, you know, do all kinds of wonders to my drain piping and so on, and, you know, have... Right now, you know, it's, it's encroached, you know, uh, into the uh, into the actually the uh, the protected area there of the tree. You know, uh, what is the you know uh, you know what thoughts were given to allow the growth of the tree because that trunk will get bigger. Uh, you know, and uh, the future you know growth of the tree. And you know, your statement here says you know we will find out after we excavate. To find out what the extension extent of the uh, the you know root uh, removal, uh, my thought is is that if you want to save the tree, just transplant the tree and then you know just uh, do the construction. Uh, is is my logical thought behind this thing here? Uh, why get into construction? You know, get everything situated, have all the uh, construction uh, you know the you know, the equipment and all that, and find out that you have to do a, you know alternate plan. Afterwards, you know, why not just start out cleanly by doing that? Uh, so, you know, that's I want to know what the thought process behind this was to recommend it to leave the tree in there. It's probably a, a good question for the applicant. I know they've heard your question. Is there something that staff would like to say about it, or do you defer to the applicant? Well, I, I would uh, refer to the applicant on this one because the report was generated by the applicant. Um, I know that uh, there are mitigation measures that will be followed to, to ensure the protection of the tree, even though that it isn't uh, a state protected tree, but uh, concerns will be better addressed by the applicant. All right, we'll bring you up in just a moment, Mr. Taylor. Stand by. Any other questions for staff? I have one. Normally we have a motion prepared, and I don't find it in my packet. Good. I have copies here. We were talking about that coming in. I just was waiting to see if one of you guys would bring it up. <clears throat> we knew you would. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. These oh, men can't that. read that much. <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Taylor, if you would approach, and I'm sure you have some remarks. If you'd like, perhaps you could start off by addressing Mr. Lee's inquiry about the tree. I'd be happy to. Uh, my name is Bob Taylor. I'm with Nakaishi Associates. And uh, regarding the tree, we did have our uh, landscape architect take a look at uh, the tree, and he identified it as a California sycamore. And based on that information uh, and his recommendation to have an arborist view the excavation for the new building, uh, to protect any roots and see if, if roots could be cut or perhaps a different uh, foundation design could be built uh, to save the roots. Uh, but now with this news coming from our uh, city forester, um, we could easily remove <coughs> the tree and uh, plant another in its place. Well, I guess, again, this is news you just heard today, correct? Yes, that's right. And we can deal with it a couple different ways. Um, have you had a chance to ask your client what their feelings were about trying to save the tree effort? It, it may stay here. And what, what's the di current diameter of the tree? I think it's at 15 inches or somewhere. 15? Yeah, I think that's what it, we're it's supposed to say. It was just recently planted, I believe. It's oh, not, 15 not that old. A 15 inch was recently planted? Wow. Okay. <clears throat> it was planted 15 years ago. Oh, 15 years ago. Uh, that's what I said. Trunk is 15 inches in. Yeah. It is 15 inches? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what I said. On right. page two. Of All right, so my question is, have you had a chance to discuss with your client, now that the tree apparently is not protected, what their, what their feelings are going to be about it? I mean, we can go different ways. We have a motion that's been prepared on the basis of that tree being protected, and all your work to this point has been on that basis. Have you had a chance to chat about it? We have, and uh, we would like to remove the tree 
and plant the new tree in place. Or in a, in a, hmm. in the approximate area. Somewhere off a of fairway, I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're close to a green. <laughs> you put a bunker in its place. Okay, we understand how that works. Because I also saw in the report that they do have plans to, you know, uh, plant uh, so many trees beyond right, additional trees. Yeah, additional trees. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't see any problems with that. That's correct. Okay, and we'll discuss that among ourselves. We, we understand it's not a protected tree, but it was also a consideration, so we'll work through it. Now, what else would you like to tell us about the project? I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Reza for presenting the project uh, completely for us, and I'm happy to answer any questions. I do have representatives from Oakmont Country Club here. I could answer any other questions you may have. Um, will this be done at the same time you're closing the course for the irrigation work? So simultaneous to that. Are there any uh, questions from the commission at this moment? I don't have any. Wait, you want to do the site visit? No? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, th and one of the reasons, of course, as you know, that you're in front of us is as the Planning Commission, we're the design review authority for special recreation areas. So we get to look at things like cell towers and restrooms. You know, we really get the, the attractive <laughs> stuff. So, yeah. items. Yes, <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, I don't see any remarks at this moment, Mr. Taylor. There may be some things as we discuss, and we'll invite you back up. Did you gentlemen want to add anything or say anything as part of the applicant? All right. All right, uh, my, commission, my fellow commissioners, have we had a chance to look over the motion? Do we have any initial comments that we'd like to share among ourselves or with the public? Well, the motion would have to be amended to remove condition number nine. That's, yeah. that's about it. Although I'm not sure you actually do need to remove it given that city mitigation measures don't apply to you know, okay. non-native trees. They're complying by, <laughs> right. By virtue by, of not applying. a protected tree on the site. The only thing I would, and I'm perfectly fine given that it's not, according to the forester, uh, a California sycamore, I'm perfectly fine having that tree removed and another of uh, equal size um, planted in its place. I, I would ask that the tree that is planted in its place be a California sycamore uh, as it's a policy to promote native species. That's an interesting and good observation, I think. Anything else, gentlemen? I guess my only comments are I, I support the concept of uh, replacing the non-native sycamore with a native, um, and uh, in general, the you know the design, the <coughs> color selection, the palette, it's all appropriate for what it is and where it is. So I'm certainly okay with uh, uh, approving it. If there's no other comments, perhaps we could have a motion. Uh, then we can work on the wording of that. Right, the addition. Okay. So, so I would uh, amend the, the motion as prepared by staff to include the uh, final, I guess it would be the tenth uh, condition that the existing tree uh, be replaced with a California sycamore uh, of equal size um, elsewhere on the property. And before we make that a formal motion and seek a, a second, let me ask the uh, applicant. You're doing a lot of work, uh, probably not under your auspices, but with the club, in terms of the landscaping, additional trees, tree removals, a lot of stuff going on over the next six or eight months, correct? The trees that are going to be added, do you happen to know what their palette is, What what's being added to it? Um, and if you wouldn't mind uh, approaching. And then quickly your name, please. Uh, my name is Greg Frederick. I'm the director of golf at Oakmont Country Club. Um, we do have an extensive plan that we've worked with the golf course architect and, and also a landscape architect on, on trees. California sycamores are in the, uh, in the mix. And uh, uh, we have about 150 trees that we'll be planting along the property. Oaks. Uh, we have some uh, Canary Island pines. Uh, we have... Um, uh, eucalyptus 
uh, 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 lemon, I think they call it the lemon uh, eucalyptus tree. Good burning. Um, uh, what's that? A good burning eucalyptus. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but uh, main and valley oaks. Those are the those are the, the, the trees of of choice by the club, the climate, um, and also uh, mixes with the existing trees that we have on property. What are you doing as it relates to the um, existing evergreen trees along Country Club that are, are slowly dying out? Uh, you're talking about the ones along the first fairway. Uh, yes. Towards, mm -hmm. um, some of those aren't dying. They're actually uh, pollinating. So they look like they're dying. Well, they're they pollinating west. by falling over occasionally. Well, <laughs> you know, trees, trees have a life. I, 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 yes, I, 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 I don't know how long those that, that species has been there. Um, uh, certainly, uh, there was a tree that did fall a, a couple of years ago. Um, uh, those are on the city's parkway, uh, is my understanding. But we um, kind of maintain under them and, and, and around them. But uh, the trees look burnt, kind of burnt orange right now. And there's male and female species of those trees. So it, during the fall, you'll, or, or late summer, early fall, you'll see them change colors. And every year, members will come up to me and ask me, you know, the trees are dying. and, and and the like, but uh, um, you know, uh, we'll do with whatever we need to do to maintain the trees. We we enjoy the the environment of the trees and work with our urban foresters or or with the uh, Bill McKinley was working with the city. We had him out quite often. So, so country. your own horticulturist or your own um, tree well, experts? We, we have healthy. we have uh, Mitchell Pest Control that mm -hmm. does a lot of uh, research for us, and and also Western Arborist and. Because um, there has been a there center. has been a you know a pine tree death. Thing well, going there's on. there's boar beetles. There's a mm -hmm. lot of things that'll hit uh, trees over a period of time. But um, those are generally healthy, except for the ones that have failed. Cause, yes, because you lost yeah. two or three. Yeah, we've we've lost more probably in wind storms over the mm -hmm. years than than certainly any other kind well, of. Well, that's usually when storms. you find out that there's a problem with the tree. Well, that's but, exactly right. But yeah. so they're generally healthy. Yes, and uh, you know although they're quite mature. Right. Okay. Exactly. So what you're doing doesn't have anything to do with those necessarily. No. Okay. No, they're not in the in the plan to be removed or replaced at, at this point. So. All right. Thank you very much. You're Other one, one quick question. question. Huh? See how one question mm -hmm. begats over. Well, I just I noted that I'd put it up there before in reading the material. Uh, it was mentioned that the <coughs> structures shielded from from the boulevard by the hedges. Does taking the tree out? impact that at all as far as being viewed from the roadside? There, there's quite a few other sycamores in the area, and there's some oak trees. There's some large oak trees that are right on the property line uh, that, that um, I don't think would, you know, in my opinion, wouldn't really cast a, a neighborhood view issue. Um, certainly, if we can plant something uh, in the area, and we'll, we'll, we'll um, ask our, our architect you know, if we are removing the tree, can we put something over farther over that right. might replace right. that that wouldn't interfere with the reason I brought it up, I think it said in the package that the hedges that were on the fence line it blocked it. I, I, I didn't know if that's still the case or is removing the tree going to, going to make it more difficult to do that? Uh, no. Oh, okay. No. That, that was my no. only point. No, no, it's far enough away that it won't be a, an issue with the hedges. Or, okay. Yeah. That's all I have. Well, I have a question, Mr. Chairman. If, Please. Um, if the condition is added to, or the motion is amended to add the condition number 10 that Commissioner Jero suggested, replace the sycamore with a California sycamore of equal size. Uh, is that possible? Can you buy a 15 inch diameter trunk, 30 foot tall that, sycamore, and just. Well, not easily. Um, it, it depends on, especially up in that location, might be a little bit more difficult to get the equipment in and, and, and so forth to get it in that site. Um, that tree is about 10 years old, and we planted it out of a three-foot box, um, and it was probably upwards of a six-inch diameter when we planted it. So um, my only thing would be that, you know, I, sycamores are very fast-growing trees in our, in our area, um, and we seem to do extremely well at the club with them and, and size and and uh, uh, root structure it seems to be uh, very good for our alluvial floodplain property so um, I don't know if we can get a 15 foot we would have to get a, a pretty good size box tree that that would be one expensive and also incredibly difficult to get it into the property on a crane and and, and located it, it we we plan on you know if, if we bought 
a lot of two, three uh, foot box trees, I think we could you know, easily replace the value of that tree. Um, certainly, um, the members are the ones that see it most, and I think that that trying to plant a 15 foot or 15 inch uh, diameter tree might be difficult for us. And I it would. Sure. I'm fine with a 36 inch box. That'd be fine by me. And Mr. Lee? Yeah, you know, um, uh, that was in the report, and also uh, uh, the director of the uh, uh, club has mentioned that they do have extensive plan in place to plant more trees, more sycamore, California sycamores, and uh, so on. So, uh, my opinion is that, uh, you know, that I think plan itself is, uh, is a, you know, offset. Uh, to removal of this tree, I don't think we have to put on another condition to replace this tree. Is uh, you know, it's my opinion. Okay. I and just to echo that, I, I appreciate where you're coming from. If this had been a protected tree, and you know, I think we'd be all over it in terms of replacing like with like. But given what they're doing in terms of their extensive work, um, while it's a nice thought, I think we're probably okay by letting nature take its course and letting them use perhaps a 36-inch box. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that, was, right. that was my point. If I, I didn't think you could buy a 15. Oh, okay. No, I thought you were. I thought you were pushing no, for it or, or no, inquiring worried, about. The I was worried about the possibility of even finding something okay. that large. All right. Much less putting it in. All right. Any um, other questions or comments on the conditions? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. We have a. We had the uh, suggested condition that was added about the uh, the California sycamore. Um, something that uh, Mr. Sheets had got me thinking, and in terms of screening, I think perhaps what we might consider doing is on condition five, which talks about screening for ground and roof mounted equipment. I think I, and then it talks about additional screening uh, might be uh, ordered by the planning department on final inspection. I think what we might say is, is in include a, a clause that said all ground and roof mounted equipment, comma, including the facility itself, comma, is required to be fully screened from public view, meaning um, not within the golf course proper as far as the members, but... Right. You want them to see where it is. It's right at the <laughs> view from the public right of way? Yes, thank you. How does that sound to you, gentlemen? Is it appropriate? Is it unnecessary? I, I think it meets the, the intent as to what I read in the package, that they made a point to state that it was sh shielded from the view, whether that's the hedges along the property line and or the sycamore that exists. And I, I think I agree with that, that that would be the direction to go to leave it at least as good as it is today. Okay. So I, I, I think that's a good that's upgrade. A condition. Yep. All right. Well, we were starting to make a motion. I believe you were in the throes of that. <laughs> um, we created the condition, and if you would like to recap with the added conditions and that kind of stuff, then we can search for a second. Right, so the added condition would be that um, replacement of the existing tree with a California sycamore 36-inch um, box uh, in an approximate location to, to the facility. And, and the re revision, you want to show me that one? I'll make that motion was, as well. Um, Revised condition number five. Um, roof mounted equipment parentheses and... Itself. So Report condition right number right. five is uh, would it be amended to say all ground and roof mounted equipment, comma, including the facility itself, uh, comma, is required to be fully screened from public from, view. From from public right view, of. public view from public right of way. Public right of way. Right. Okay, we have a motion. Keep Any in last sentence. Sorry. <laughs> five. We would include the, f the final sentence in okay. condition five is fine. Way to keep us on the straight and narrow, Mr. Foy. We're just adding. So we're adding, we're not subtracting in this case. All right. Uh, we have a motion. Any discussion? Searching for support. Second. A motion and a second. Could you call a roll, please? Commissioner Sheets. Aye. Commissioner Dodgerson. Aye. Commissioner Jarreau. Aye. Commissioner Lee. Aye. And Chair King. Aye. On a vote of 5 to 0, and I really wanted to say 4, but on a vote of 5 to 0, Special Recreation Design Development Review, PSR 2008-002, has been um, approved. Thank you. All right. Moving on to agenda item 9, Planning Department updates. Um, 
as of now, we have nothing on the agenda for your next regularly scheduled meeting. Hmm. So it might be canceled. Which meeting? The next meeting we have nothing on, uh, scheduled on the agenda. So it may be canceled due to a uh, lack of items. Uh, in October, you will probably be getting um, two uh, ordinances to make recommendations to the council. One, uh, a set of cleanups for the zoning zoning code. Uh, and then also uh, the return of the uh, use variances. And in addition, there may be an appeal. We have an appeal that's hanging out that we'd like to get finished mm -hmm. of a hillside property. Very good. Uh, what appeals that have, that we have heard um, might be coming up to council soon? I believe there's one coming up. Yeah. Did you do Hillway? Well, I forget. is Hillway where they were splitting the property, and yes, that's right. Uh huh. It hasn't been scheduled yet, but we are uh, doing some further work on that application. Okay. Right. Now, when is the October? First October Planning Commission meeting? The third. October third is Friday. I don't think so. <coughs> I'd suggest it might be the Sorry. first. October 1. October 1. Right. First. 10 1. And then the 15th. You're saying that first might be canceled? No, I'm saying I'm September, 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 September 17th. Oh, be. All right. So much for that workload, I tell everybody that's so tough for us. <laughs> All right. Any other comments from planning? Department. None. All right. Uh, commissioners, any comments? None. All right. Um, could I have a motion to adjourn? So move. We are adjourned.